come during this season of Thanksgiving, time of gratitude, and also on this Giving Tuesday, we just ask you to let our minds and hearts be aware of others who have less than ourselves, of those who are less fortunate, and especially as we have been asked to do, that we think of others before ourselves. You have called us together to be people mindful of our Creator, mindful of the good that we have received. Let us be able to think with clear minds, move with pure hearts, and be ever grateful to you for the bountiful way that you have cared for your people. Bless this meeting tonight and bless all those who come to share. Give us a heart that you would have us have mindful of one another. We pray this prayer in every prayer, saying, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister. Um, additions to the agenda. Oh, well, I've already put on there that we have rearranged the sequence of the agenda and um, to remove the land bank policy. <coughs> Are there any other additions to the agenda? No. This will be it. Oh, sorry. Uh, I want an executive session on the police department before we go into the police department on non elected personnel. What was the subject? Police department. No. Well, all right, good enough. Check yours. Yeah, that's it. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by vote. Citizens' comments. Um, first, let me say I appreciate everyone being here tonight. It's nice to see a packed house for a change. Um, if you are here with regards to the fourth officer in the community, we will hold everybody's comments until we go into that item. And if everyone is looking to speak, we will limit it to three minutes a person. So, is there anyone now who has a comment that isn't in regards to the fourth officer? Okay. Um, just as a general information, Kevin Davis will be taking the meeting over about 7.20 as I need to leave for a family obligation. Okay, consent agenda. Approve minutes for the regular meeting of 11-18-2014. Approve appropriation ordinance 1201-2014 in the amount of $8,604.30. Approve appropriation ordinance 1202-2014 in the amount of $72,194.74. Is there any discussion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Is there some place where council can move as opposed to all the people having to move? I can take the upstairs, ma'am. Okay. okay. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Move for a ten minute executive session. Council and the mayor. Yes. Second. Please depart time. To resume at what time? At 7.14. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by vote. <coughs> Costs regarding 304 officers. At this point, I'm not sure it's a question of the costs involved. Um, I do have a letter here I would like to read that was sent to us by a citizen. Um, it's actually addressed to Mr. Bryant. Dear Mark, as a resident and taxpayer here in St. John for over 10 years, I would like to express my opinion regarding the issue of hiring a fourth police officer for our city. It would appear that certain council members may be viewing the need for a fourth officer solely based on the level of crime in St. John. And in that context, I can actually see where council members might not feel the need exists. However, I would like to suggest council members take a moment to consider the issue from a human resource perspective. As someone who works over a thousand overtime hours per year at my job due to staffing shortages, 
I can verify firsthand that if employees in any field are not allowed adequate time off to attend to personal matters, health concerns, family obligations, etc., the end result can be extremely negative, including, but not limited to, excessive fatigue, lower morale, and in some cases, complete burnout. For over a decade, I have heard the people of City Hall asking what we can do to attract new families to St. John. For me, the fact that our city is one of safety and low crime is very high on the list of positives here. However, the officers we entrust to keep us safe do not seem to receive the consideration they are due when it comes to maintaining a proper level of staffing and understanding by council members as a group how the lack of a fourth officer could affect the officer's ability to continue our current excellent level of safety. I would ask each council member to consider how they would feel if a valuable portion of the compensation they received from their employer were forfeited due to staffing shortages. Our officers have, at times, been forced to give up their PTO, which I'm going to assume means personal time off, simply due to the fact that it isn't feasible to have any one of them off duty for an extended period of time while still providing a continuous presence. This reality is not only dangerous but absolutely outrageous and would never be tolerated by employees in the private sector. In closing, I hope we can, as a city, come to an agreeable conclusion on this issue as it has dragged on for far too long and at a cost none of us may ever fully realize. St. John needs a fourth police officer in fairness to the men who currently patrol our streets and for the safety of our community. Huge thanks to Chief Saylor and his officers for all they do. Sincerely, Suzanne Gervais. Gervais. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak at this time? Can I make a comment before anybody does? Certainly. Um, there was some, I just want to go to the public, there was a pretty vulgar comment that was left on our Facebook page regarding this. Um, that's something I didn't appreciate and don't condone. And as soon as I can get it removed, it will be removed. I just want to say, anybody who wants to make any comments, we appreciate those, but we ask you to please be respectful. Okay. Anyone else at this time that would like to make a comment? I would. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of a drawer. One of the things I've realized is right now, I believe the officers are running 60 hours a week. I understand that four hours of their 12-hour shift every day is considered to be call time. However, they're still responsible for those four hours, no matter whether it's call time or whether it's riding in the car. Okay? One of my things in looking at it from a boss's perspective is that if one of these officers becomes sick for an extended period of time, you're down to two officers working 84 hours a week. And along with the letter that you just received from that young lady, that's exactly what you're setting up. You're setting up work comp issues. You're setting up a lot of other concerns. You're also setting up the fact that you're putting them in a position of, of stress even higher than what they already are. You know, we don't ride in that car. We don't see what goes on. What we know is we go to bed at night and we know it's protected. But overall, what's going to happen, guys, is we look at this right now. Right now, if they're running 60 hours a week apiece, you're already paying for a fourth officer. That's 20, that's 20 hours per person. You're already paying 40 hours for a fourth officer. And if you lose that officer, you lose one of the officers or the gone, then you're going to be running trying to protect St. John with two officers. And it's just not a good situation. Thank you. Anyone else? Is it already budgeted in the police department to support a fourth officer or not? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Comments. Dakota? I'm primarily here <coughs> as a citizen of St. John. I've lived here, of course, most people know all my life. I do dispatch for Stafford <coughs> County Sheriff's Office which does cover St. John's Police Agency. And uh, I'm in full support of these men, not only as a citizen, but also working with them and seeing what they do, seeing what they have been put through by having to be a three-man department, has opened my eyes even more as a citizen and scares the living H-E double hawking sticks out of me when I know that at 5 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, anything, 
that something can happen. This is small town USA, but our country is getting worse every day. And uh, I know I would certainly feel more protected having a six-year-old child at home that would you know, like to ride his bike down the street or to school, knowing that we have a four-man department and knowing that they are all well-rested and that they all have time off and that they are all able to want to get out and do their jobs and protect our school and our community. And I have a great deal of respect for the council people because it's not easy to set up there and do the job that they have to do. And I just believe that it would be in our town's best interest. We've had a four-man department for years, and I don't see why it is an issue. I still have not gotten a clear answer why we have not been able to have one voted in. Um, but there are so many reasons that we should have one in. And I would just feel safer in my community. On behalf of the EMS department, I'd like to voice my support as well for the fourth police officer. We value these men more than they ever know. Um, they come and help us on our calls. They assist with just about anything that we need. Um, and they have been run ragged, and they have moved mountains with the three men that they have on our department. I think it's time for us to recognize, to give them the recognition, the respect, and the well rest that they need and have a fourth police officer. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the other side of the issue? So then what that tells me is that every person in this room is in support of a fourth officer. Yes. 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 Okay. I got a comment. I'm yeah. here. I know you have some guys retire on the other departments. Have you put have you filled those jobs that became available? Where we can, yes, we have. So the, the, all the other departments get help as they need them. Mm -hmm. People retire, you replace them. That's correct. And the only mm -hmm. issue is with the police department on getting the extra. <coughs> At the moment, I mean, like we're I said, short. Not really. We're still yeah. short. Yeah. Well, I say, as, as if we can replace people, we do. Um, <coughs> like it's no question. Shoot. It's no question. If they need someone, they're going to get it if you can get it for them. Right. That's okay. Agreed. I'd like to know how many council members work 60 plus hours a week and do not take their own families on vacation or spend time with them because there's not the coverage for to do that. I can guarantee two of them. <laughs> Sherry, so three of them? But they have vacation time at work. It's their option whether they take it or not. Our police officers, we don't have the coverage, so they don't get that PTO time. That's cheating them out of a benefit that's provided. Well and in all fairness, how many of those kids are actually in pre or in school or under? You guys have grown kids, right? You have children, children? Or no children at all. Right. <coughs> Mr. Lakey. Yes, may I? Yes, you may. I uh, there's a, a lot of reasons that people could have for either one, but... I think having the fourth officer, you're getting four rested people and it probably doesn't cost any more. It might even be cheaper than having three and paying them overtime. The other thing is it would be good for the city to have another family in town. The school would benefit, the city businesses would benefit. So I, I don't see why if you or even close to flipping a coin about it, it would seem to me to make a lot of sense to have that extra person in town. Thank you. Ma'am? Yes, you know. I was on the councils back in 1876. <laughs> 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 it's been a few years. But we had four on the council, on the police department, and it worked out great. There was times that somebody did get sick or whatever, we dropped down to three, they got by. But uh, <coughs> it worked out a lot better with four than it did with three. And it gave everybody more time to be rested or to work shift around where they had a day off or get a little vacation. And 
I think that works with anybody if, and any employees if you've got enough to work around with. It just works a lot smoother. I would like to speak as wife, <coughs> chief police, and assistant of St. John. Every day my husband goes to work, working. I don't know if he's going to come home. He's out there to protect and serve. And I don't have that assurity he's going to be home every night. We have five children that we take care of and that we support and that we love. He works every vacation. I've watched him work with influenza. I've watched him work just about a month with one day off. I don't know how, you know how hard that is on a family to not have that time off. Or to be so sick, you can barely function, but yet you go to work. And I just, I just ask that council tonight votes for the people and considers the people. Thank you. Okay. As much as I hate to do this, at this point I'm going to turn the meeting over to Kevin Davis as president because, as I said, I have a family obligation that I cannot miss. Um, I would ask that we keep our differences civil, whatever they may be, and leave it in your very capable hands. like to ask again, it, it's still in the budget for a fourth option. Yes, yes it is. I just want to thank uh, Council Member Mark Bryant for his comments in the letter to the editor of the paper. Yes. I thought he spoke the issue very well, and I'm in agreement with what he said, and basically anything I had would have to say would be echoing a lot of what he had in the paper. And I would also say that I can only imagine on a police officer the stress that they're under. And when you're tired, fatigued, sick, other issues going on, trying to make decisions in a high-stress situation, I cannot imagine, even with their training and everything that way, as to making those decisions for, you know, at the time, making them correctly. And I thank the police officers. I thank you guys on the council for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Do any of the council members have any questions for the public? I have one for Stan. Okay. <laughs> the school board sent us a letter. Was that the majority rules or was it everybody? All in favor. Everyone was in favor. Okay. Good. I think that um, this council really needs to consider this right now, that everything has been said by the community and what they want. Each of these people here voted for one of us at one point or another. They asked us to do the job in the best interest of the community. Yes. And that is what we need to do. We need to put everything else aside and think about the community. And like I said in my letter to the editor, we are not being good employees, excuse me, good employers to our employees when we are making them work all the hours that they work. There's more to life than just working. We all work to make a living. We don't live to work. Family time is just as important as anything else. And I'll tell you this right now. 
as a Marine veteran, when you put that uniform on, regardless of what it is, whether it be a police officer, fireman, or an EMS worker, you do not know whether you are going to come back when you step out that door. When I put my uniform on as a Marine, and I went to do my duty for my country, I had no idea if I was going to come back, but I accepted that. And we need to realize that these people do this on a daily basis. And for that, I give them thanks. And that is why they have my undying support. And I think we need to vote on this tonight, and we need to end this tonight. You're here. Yes. Make a motion. Agree. I agree. Make a motion. I would like to make a motion at this point to hire a fourth officer for the city of St. John's Police Department. Here, second. Through that deal, though, I mean, if we do that, um, it was through the this guy's. Joe Flazzo, Flazio is the deal that we, and we'll go through the call time issues and everything else. If you look right here what Mr. Palazzo has said, my observations and recommendations are as follows. Number one, a four-person police department is best for the citizens of St. John and the police department. I didn't that. I didn't say that. But we also need to consider the other options. It's just not whether one's here or one's not. The other things need to be considered also. Which other things? Like the call time. He recommends there will be no call time. We can deal with that. Well, then we need to deal with it. We will deal with it at the appropriate time. <coughs> okay, the motion on the table is to hire a fourth officer. I will second that motion. And we will open it up for further discussion. I've talked to a lot of people, I see a lot of people, one of their really main concerns, Adam, is they want night protection. They want, I think they want that more than anything else because that's when a lot of things happen. And we asked you a year ago that we told you we wanted that and we have not seen it. We thought that you could rearrange your officers so we did have some night protection and that hasn't happened. When, when, when that was discussed, first of all, I don't say how you can say that that's not seen. The night, the evening shift is from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. Is that officer always out that 12 hours? No, they're not. We do our shifts according to our caseload. The majority of our calls are taken during the day and in the earlier evening hours. So. The way I was approached, the reason I was given for, for the, uh, that we don't have a fourth officer was due to money. Okay, if I ha put an officer out, if I flip-flop that and I have an officer out from all night and then they're on call during the day, you're going to be paying more in overtime because the majority of your calls come during the day or the early evening hours. You're going to have to call that person out of bed to get up <coughs> and take care of the calls. And second of all, I also mentioned that I did not feel as a chief it was appropriate to leave our businesses in our school, school vulnerable with nobody on duty. I have no problems as soon as we can get the staffing with doing everything we can to provide 24 hour coverage. I've stated that more than once. And again, a lot of the reason that I feel that we're getting support from the school is because of what we've done in school, the presence we've had in the school, the programs we started in the schools, and the, and the extra safety measures we've made to ensure that these guys here are safe. I'm, it, it's, it's kind of playing devil's advocate. I don't want to say that somebody's business at night is less important than kids in school and businesses that are open. Um, but again, it comes back to when our calls are actually taking place and a large majority of the crimes that have happened in the past in the overnight hours have been complete crimes of opportunity where the business or property owner could have taken measures to lessen that opportunity. And each one of those we've discussed with those individuals, what they could do to better protect themselves, um, essentially to help us. 
You said your shifts are from 4 to 4 a.m. or whatever, because mm -hmm. I see your officers when I go home on Monday night at 1 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I see Charlie sitting mm -hmm. down there at Senex with his headlights pointed down here, so you're saying there's only three hours then that, that uh, somebody may be not be covered. Like Does the council feel... Seems like pretty good coverage for three yeah, officers to me. going to work with us. Mm -hmm. You want to vote? Any other discussion back and forth between Adam and the council? Mr. Presley, yes. may I make a suggestion um, as far as this motion is concerned? Um, I, I know that Troy still has some concerns and I think some others about some of the details of that hiring. However, we could make this motion to hire the fourth officer and those details to be worked out um, and yeah, maybe put a date. If they're not, then that leaves us open. Right. So. It, I mean, either you want to make work out all those details right now at the table to include in this motion, which would probably be the cleanest way to do it, or you make the motion to work out the details so that it's you have the opportunity to make those decisions. I feel confident that we can get it worked out, as do I. So I think we need to include that in your in your um, motion. More, that's fine. So. Can we know those details? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, when those details are worked out, they will be also included in motion, right, and discussed right here in open session, whether it's tonight or whether it's at another meeting coming up. Um, but so those will all be official records. We can go ahead and topic on them right now and put them in this motion. One of them is uh, call time. Mm -hmm. But don't you think we need Adam's input on that too? I mean, we... Yeah, we just, dis we just, because I mean, in regards, I mean, it's going to drop their pay for the officers that are already on duty. They're going to be losing overtime. When you hire a fourth officer, which is another cut in pay that they've been getting, you're going to lose call time, which is another cut in pay that they've already been getting. So, I mean, it's, it's a big issue. Do you want to address that, Adam? Um, is it a big issue? So, Sergeant Rudy's here. Well, I would think it would if you're him. Yes, sir. They're, they're here. So, Sergeant they're Rudy's here. here. I think he could saying. speak um, to the overtime. I know um, I'm going to speak for Charlie. He's, he's sick. He's not here. Um, Charlie came to me and, and said that Sherry had approached him and asked him about the overtime and Charlie wanted me to convey that at this point in time, after three years of being burned out, his time off and his time with his family is more important than the overtime he is getting. And I do want to reiterate, it is physically impossible to provide 24-7 coverage all the time even with four officers. <coughs> Even just with days off. If you have four officers, you have two days off a week, that's eight days. There's only seven days a week, which means one of those days during the week is going to be a double up day on days off. So you're only going to have two officers. So you're going to have one off, you know, one covering 12 hours and another covering 12 hours. As a chief, I am more than willing to offer if those officers working would like four hours of overtime to make sure we have the 24 7 coverage. I don't have a problem with that. It's not something I want to force because I don't believe in a second on forced overtime unless we have an emergency. The other thing is, if we have somebody sick and somebody at training at the same time, then we have to revert back to some call time. But like I said in the past, I am more than willing to work in every single day that we have enough officers here and on the street, there will be 24-7 coverage. I have said that from the beginning and have been committed to that. So it's it's not going to completely remove overtime having fourth officers, and it's not going to completely remove calls. Uh, Aaron, do you have any comments? I would, I would just think it in what Adam said, and, and like I said at the last council meeting, you know, we ran into a situation where I couldn't attend the funeral with my <coughs> grandfather that passed away. I really would have liked to have been there. You know, and there was nothing you guys could do, nothing we could do about it. Having, if we'd had the fourth officer, I could have attended, we wouldn't have a problem. Those are things, I mean, that's got nothing to do with the money, you know. I should have been there, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Can I ask a question? <coughs> One more. Yep. The amount of call time that we pay out 
equals a fourth officer, are, how are we talking money wise? It wasn't anywhere close. No. Or it was less than half, I'll say that. The call time was? Yeah, it was going to be more than half. No, it, it wasn't <laughs> good figures to use in this battle. Right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we have a motion. I have a second. Is there any further discussion between the council members and Adam? All those in favor we have the. To make, do you want to put a date on this to have the details worked out? You want to have it at the next oh. meeting? <laughs> yes. And that'll give everybody time to kind of. Um, maybe you want to put a committee together. You can have two council persons, the mayor and the officers, or something like that to work yeah. out anything. <clears throat> you going to be here the December 16th meeting? That yes. is, okay. Does that work for you? Absolutely. Okay. We're going to discuss call time December 16th and if it passes. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Three to two. Ayes have a trolling ball. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Any further comments, Adam? <coughs> Just under the chief's report, that's all. If we're ready to move on to that. Yep. Okay. Um, I need approval. We had the alternator go out in the Crown Vic, um, so I need approval for. Okay. $558.88. Um, I will say I went ahead and, and uh, the work has been done. The only reason I did that work without getting prior approval is the blazer is down again. And I didn't want us to be stuck with one control car and have it break down and we're down to nothing. So. What was that amount again? 558 And who was that with? Uh, Fisher Service. We'll any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? recommended and um, both the folks that are working on our code recodification and our attorney have recommended that we go ahead and do this regarding the mayor's appointments um, and it will keep us from being um, in a situation that could be a liability is to protect us by mm -hmm. doing this. Okay. It, it doesn't really, I mean, it's a lot of legal mumble jumble yeah, here, but um, that, that is the, the gist of it, and I don't think I probably explained it very well, but it's a liability issue, and, and it's been recommended by both okay. of those guys. So we need to move to approve number mm -hmm. 16. We'll make a motion to approve. Charter Ordinance Number 16. Okay. Oh, just a second. Any further comments. discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? I know. No other new business. Administration now. The only thing I have to report is the roof been put on the house on East 3rd. That's been taken care of. Uh, once we get the land bank in place, I guess we can proceed on the and you guys want to do that. So. Was it uh, the original bid? 
It was actually years. less than what, less? when what we How much less was it? I don't remember. It wasn't very much. The you know, but it wasn't very really much. Did it look pretty good now? Yeah, I haven't been over for final inspection. We haven't paid them yet, but I, I need to go over and double check. But I was over there while they were putting it on. So. Thank you. Any questions for Mel? Oh, we coming over the water? Yeah. Or else we would keep. We got the final tie in there at uh, South and Maine tomorrow morning. So we'll get that done. That's the last red stuff we have to deal with. We'll get the pipe laid up and then we'll get disinfected flush and start hooking people up. So that, that single digit wind chill and kind of satisfaction a little bit. And that the snow plow is on and a couple of water leaks. And so we're, we're back on track. And we'll have a decent, decent weather for a while. Um, yeah, the first thing I have on the agenda is the renewal of Kroger's um, cereal malt beverage license. Um, everything's in place. We just need your approval. So we move. Mark, move, box second, or whatever. Miss <laughs> <laughs> <Tom, laughs> <otherwise. laughs> my brain up. It doesn't take much. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, and the other thing, um, just to let you know, the reason why we took the land bank policy off of this agenda, when I contacted, um, I had sent the agenda to, to John Beverlin, and he informed me that since we've established it already with our ordinance that was published, we cannot, it has to have its own meeting. Okay, I was thinking we needed to work through the policy before we would do that, and he said, no, that has to be done within its own meeting. So the suggestion from the mayor is that we, on the 16th, that we would adjourn our regular council meeting and go into the land bank meeting. And so we will have two agendas, one for the land bank and one for the regular council meeting if that's what you would like to do. And that's all I have, unless you guys have some questions. Any questions for John? Thank you, John. Electric department now, or uh, Jeff? Just two things really. The poles that we bought um, last council meeting or two council meetings ago are here. Uh, the price was the same as what the bid was. Uh, the other thing is we have the scout cabin rewired. It's done and ready for whoever's next on the list. So other than that, that's all I have. Was it all pretty good? Um, the poles? Or the scout cabin? Yeah, the well, it had its issues, but I mean we we just completely gutted it out. We did everything's new in there, so uh, it's ready for. I think Kevin's going to do the furnace and that stuff. It's ready for him, and I think the insulation is ready to go in in the attic. And the doors are hung. Mike's got most of the metal on. The only thing we need to buy is an outside light fixture to replace the old ratty one that was on the front, which will get ordered. No big deal. So, other than that, everything's done. So, any questions for Jeff? Thanks, Jeff. Sure. Anything on old business? That... <laughs> Anything else? No. Nope. Anybody? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. No further discussion? All the favor say aye. 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 All the opposed? Okay.